In this video I'll show you how to uh, come up with the losses and uh, other runoff coefficients for a basin area that can be used by uh, get real time uh, in its setup file for uh, reading the rainfall from a wonder gauge or the average of a wonder gauges or an X-ray radar area average rainfall. And so um, in a previous video, this is my uh, site map for my web pages, uh, listing the web pages and how to videos at the bottom. You remember that we um, uh, use next rad radar image to come up with a uh, average basin area rainfall, and from that uh, we. Uh, developed uh, these uh, boundary files uh, for the New Mexico area. There's the uh, uh, coordinates around the boundary. And then we copied these two files to our get real-time directory uh, boundary right there. Okay, um, so now we're going to use that boundary and uh, Uh, come up with the, the runoff coefficients for the setup file. And so let's go to git map area and we put that in uh, C colon program files git map area. Start up git map area. Continue. And let's close this. Um, let's load that file back. Uh, New Mexico. And here's the basin that we digitized it for NEXRAD in pixel coordinates. Now I have to digitize it to come up with uh, square miles and stream lengths. From that we can go to the runoff hydrograph um, and, uh, and you can use Google Earth to come up with these elevations uh, which I did too far. Uh, 6100 Oops. Uh, stream length is <laughs> I was pointing with my finger. Stream length is 29.7 and below centroid, excuse me, 15.5. Uh, and now when you click down here, um, it'll compute the slope of the channel in feet per mile. And uh, based on that, it'll estimate a C value that's used up here in our slope uh, or in our lag time calculation. And it came up with 5.45 hours. Uh, and the basin area was from over here 444. 444 square miles. Uh, which is pretty large for this type of stuff, but uh, at least you can see it on the radar. Okay. Um, if for rainfall durations, we can go back to our trusty handy uh, NOAA Atlas 14 point precipitation frequencies and see we're here in New Mexico. And you draw that, draw that, pull that around. And let's just look at a 25 year, a one hour, 25 years, 1.6 roughly, and a three hours, 1.9 roughly. Okay, so let's use those. One, uh, 1.6 and 3 hours uh, 1.9 now let's select the uh, SES and I'll arrange the uh, highest increment to be in the middle rainfall increment okay now what are you going to use for these losses if you're a SES aficionado you can uh, or a curve number aficionado, you could try a uh, 70. And let's turn this off so we don't um, uh, well, let's change our <laughs> let's change this. Let me turn that back on. You see what happened here? I might have to fix that. 
there. It was 1.27, put it through that. We get back to our 5.45. Okay, uh, let's turn that off so it doesn't do that again. Uh, now we're in hours, so, so let's make this. Every five minutes would be 0 0.08. 3333. Three, three. Okay. Um, now, if we uh, use that curve number of 70, compute, we get a peak of 9140. And uh, since Get Real Time doesn't use curve numbers, it uses the constant or initial loss and constant loss. So let's just do a guesstimate of 1.55 and uh, constant loss of 0 0.15. Okay, um, let's see how close we can come to that uh, curve number 70 compute. And boy, we're right on top of it, <laughs> not bad. And say, if for another example, say our curve number was 90. Um, that, get rid of that or it'll take that off. Um, we compute. Now we get a peak of 45,160. So this can be, uh, this curve number could be uh, equivalent to uh, 0 0.7 and 0 0.15 constant loss. See how that does. And pretty darn close. Close enough. Okay, but now, uh, let's, so let's just say our loss is this, initial loss and constant loss. Let's go to our uh, triangular graph, because that's what uh, we're really using in uh, Get Real Time. And here's the standard default coefficients for three-factor triangular graph. And how if we compute it, uh, it's the blue line here, and like that, close enough. You could fiddle with this if you wanted, but that's close enough. Okay. Um, so there we have our coefficients. And well, let me bring that back up. Uh, we got to remember all this. So let's. Uh, let's. Uh, See where all this comes from here. We got a lag hour of 5.45. We got a initial loss 0 0.7, a constant loss 0 0.15. We've got a uh, percent impervious. Let's put one in there, uh, just uh, so it's, it's not going to really change anything. But if you just get, uh, let's just say we had a. 0 0.1 inch rainfall, there would be no runoff. So, if you put something in there for the percent impervious, at least it'll give you something to look at, like this. Let's see, 40 CFS. So, I, I always do that. Put in a small number so you can see if it's working at least. Okay, uh, percent impervious, one area in square miles, 444, four, four, right there. And the triangular unit graph uh, number one is uh, 0 0.4 and uh, reset loss. That's this over here. So if there's rainfall and then it stops raining and starts raining again, this initial loss would be reset at uh, 0 0.2 times this uh, constant loss rate in hours, inches per hour. Okay, there's our reset loss is 0 0.2, try 2.5 from there. Try three. Okay. So now we can take these um, values and uh, close this, close this. And now we can go to our uh, Git Real Time here, Real Time Directory, and look at the setup. The setup file is. Uh, in terms and it terminates it, but you can see where I put it in right here. Let me show you a little, a little better here. Get real time select station list. This uh, an edit list. This shows you that it belongs in the, all those values belong in the shift in the shift uh, cell, and you use compute 
in unit. You could do a compute hour if you wanted to use hour or compute day if you wanted to use daily time steps. <laughs> Be quite a basin. And uh, runoff um, data type is 30. And the station site ID was, uh, let me show you that a little better. Um, site ID was uh, 002. And here's our New Mexico radar rainfall. Okay. Um, so now we could just, let's just see if we can compute this. Let's, uh, uh, and then you save it down here. Okay. Okay, now when you uh, select a station, if we just wanted to, well, let's run them both. And that one. <laughs> um, get past radars. That'll get all the radars. I've had it been going, uh, collecting radars every hour, so it's only going to uh, show us a few. Okay, let's, uh, and I'm putting it on two days, uh, because I started collecting the rainfall on next red radar two days ago. Okay, what do we got? And let's continue. Here's our basin. Not a lot happening in the last uh, hour. Okay, and then it uh, took those rainfall record and it looked it up in the HDB hydrograph or database. See it's computing it from the database values and it uh, gave us a mean daily flow of 64 CFS so it did uh, have some rain. And let me show you on our get access. Close that. Get access. And here's our database. Let's see what we computed for New Mexico area parameters. Oh, I should sh show you something else. Uh, let's go to DB tables, our site. Go. And the compute uh, um, 30 is runoff data type. That's what we're CFS and everything. But if you come over here, you need to uh, put in the parameter code of uh, of this rainfall site ID, data type site ID, 10002, and put in this compute, capital C-O-M-P-U-E. Okay. Uh, again, that uh, parameter code is this rainfall code in OR, next red. Okay, now if we go to um, our site list and look at our compute values, it shows that we got data in both of those. Uh, let's look at the rainfall. Go. Let's put it on hourly values. Go. Graph. Go. And here was just yesterday and the day before yesterday, so we did have some data. Now, if we go to um, if we go to uh, rainfall or runoff, which is site list uh, compute. Rainfall, go, oops, site list, parameters, runoff, go. Now if we graph it and, and add this as a series, we can look up rainfall and runoff. And you can't see the rain rainfall down there, so let's, uh, Y2 axis there. And here's our CFS in green and our rainfall in red. Okay. That's it.